So one of the other dimensions that's important when we think about how do we create the great learner experience and having it to align is thinking to make sure that the actual technology itself lines up to create the desired uh, learning experience. Well, so those moments of wow to make sure that it's a seamless experience from beginning to end. So as I kind of go through this, this is just one way that we look at, you know, how do you look at a technology ecosystem? What are the key features or functions within it? How do we use the technology to achieve an outcome? So the first one we really look at is the points of access. When we think about it is one of the biggest battlegrounds is where does a learner start their journey? Where do they actually say, when I need to learn something, where do I go? And so there's a couple of range of options here. You could have a, a learning portal out there, like an, uh, you know, an HTML5 portal or a dynamic SharePoint site, or you could actually have an LMS or a learning record store at your front door, or you could actually have a curation platform or a, a range of those. But the point is, is you have to have a starting uh, point for the journey where they're going to actually begin to go find what it is that they need. Then you look at it and think of the different ways that they're going to access that point. Are they going to come in through their phone, through their own personal phone? Are they going to come in through a company provided device? Are they going to come in through a laptop or a desktop? Or are they going to come in with some type of wearable technology? Um, and the reality is, is that whenever we put something out there from a learning experience, we probably want to have a seamless experience across all of these. Just as you think like in my Netflix experience, when I start watching a movie on my phone, maybe I get it home and then I'm actually on the, watching it on the big screen. And then maybe I'm getting ready to wind down for dinner. So I'll go to my, like my iPad. The idea is that I want to have that viewing experience you know, as as seamless as possible across my range of devices. I want to pick up from where I left off. I want to be able to have information about me. I want to know what the next episodes are. All of that information that kind of follows me, but it's seamless across those devices. Now, the next layer is thinking about how do we ensure that we're actually measuring across all of the tools or technologies that we have. And, and it's more than just thinking about the traditional learning, uh, you know, measurement points, whether you're Kirkpatrick or Phillips, you know, we definitely can do the level one. So how are you going to get their survey or the reaction to, you know, did you like the learning? Was it a good experience? Um, you know, are you going to, how do will you know to either help them find content through a testing engine or that you can verify that they've actually mastered certain content that's going to be in your level two testing, level three or four, how are you going to start to measure transfer or return on investment? And the idea here is how you want to be able to do that sustainably. Uh, the next one is around the experience and the engagement. You know, what did you share? What did you consume? What do you want more of? Um, then you can bring in adaptive platforms, all of these different ways that you can gather data across the platforms. You need to be able to roll up all those disparate sources and be able to draw insights from what you're seeing to not only prove, but improve over time. And that's really one of the keys when we look at this is how does that measurement and analytics layer pull across your entire ecosystem of all the different technologies. The next layer really is focusing on the experience layer. This is the point of which um, most learners experience the content, either whether it's a learning path and a curation component, it could be in a MOOC, they could be using a learning bot, that uses a text messaging system or maybe uses like a Teams app to drive a, a learning bot with that, um, coaching and mentoring apps or work enabled and reinforcement. So I'm in, a, I'm in an actual uh, work platform. So I'm trying to, you know, enter data or something and it pops up and it says, hey, how to fill this field out correctly or, or if I need to complete this process, I can get in the platform enabled support with it. And then you get your immersives, your augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, all of those components within that social. And there's actually a probably a lot more consistently growing in this space, but this is at the point of providing different types of learning experiences through technology to drive different types of learning outcomes. Um, so as you want to look at this, how will that social, that immersive, that micro gamified, how do you have the right mix of tools at the right time and collect the data from them that will help you draw, not only prove that your design worked well, the technology is delivering it, they're having a great experience, but also improve over time. 
Now, the last two here on the bottom side are really below the line from what a from what a, a learner will see. But these are the things from the L&D organization that you're thinking about. How do I develop? author publish content? How do I serve it up in bandwidth friendly ways? How do I manage all the assets that I create across the organization to get the right amount of reuse or make sure I have the right version that we're actually using? How do I manage documents like policies, procedures, informationals, instructionals, all those components? How do I actually drive a curation based system? So this is really thinking about content management. How will you do that well? And then the last layer here is really looking at the atomic level of these are all the building blocks and pieces and parts that are reused in learning experiences across the entire um, experience. Now, everything here in the middle has really been focused on at the point of learning. A few years ago, this used to be really small. This was about an LMS. And as we all know, there's been this explosion of, of, of special uh, learner experience platforms that are out there. That's why you're looking at this more complex. What we really try to do is break this down again with how do we use it in the organization to drive an outcome? Now that's on the learning side. And what's really fascinating is the part here on the right is really growing. So if anything, we're kind of smashing the left-hand side and really growing this blue column here, which is really at the point of work. How am I actually in the work environment? And so like collaborative workspaces like Teams and Slack, those embedded work platforms where I'm drawing up performance support inside those. Uh, I'm, I'm coordinating and connecting with the human capital management suite for things like talent mobility or recruiting or you know new employee onboarding and alignment with the learning platforms and the talent platforms. External sites, work-specific knowledge management sites. So all of this stuff is at the point of work. These are the things that we access in order to do to learn, to grow, to perform, to be able to do that. Now that top layer that I have around the collaborative workspaces really drags across because what we're seeing is that those collaborative workspaces, for example, like Microsoft Teams with Viva, are really looking to bring all of the learning stuff, the stuff on the left, into the actual work environment in the collaboration space so you don't actually have to leave and go outside of that. The big takeaway here is that you need to think about how does your ecosystem reinforce the type of learning experience that you're trying to create across the organization for different type of learners or performers that you have?